Bell Madness took it home. The, the, uh, the, the guy, I don't know how much I missed out then, but the guy, the guy at high school, he had the metal madness on vinyl. He said, take it home, bring it back in the morning. Got to bring it back in the morning. Took it home, bring it vinyl. Kneel on the record, Bark at the Moon, Ozzy Osbourne, sold, sold, sold. Totally, didn't even second guess it, didn't even question it. And then it had Dio, Hungry for Heaven, Motorhead, Scorpions, Except, uh, Warlock, um, which reminds me, in between all this I heard Bathory and Venom, and I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Bathory, uh, Bloodfire, Death, was, I thought that was interesting. And so was it Celtic Frost, Celtic Frost, oh my gosh, the metalheads are going to cringe, aren't you, the way I pronounce things. And I thought they were interesting. But the, the metal, the metal madness vinyl introduced, it, that, that introduced me to Dio. Black Sabbath, but which I'd already heard anyway at my friend's place when she played for me on vinyl. I was coming from all areas. And no, my parents were playing none of this at home. They weren't remotely into heavy metal, and they were mortified when I did. My, my dad was mortified when I got into heavy metal. Um, they hate is a strong word to use. They didn't like it, not one bit. And. They were d very displeased when I bought Girls, Girls, Girls on vinyl and put it on the lounge. So much so that Mum said, Dad said, you got to take it off the playing room. You can't play it out here. We don't want it out here. And, and uh, they, uh, so eventually, which I suppose is reasonable. So I just, what I would do is if I bring a vinyl home, I'd record it onto the cassette tape and then listen to it in my room. So the next day I went back to school with a metal madness spine. I gave it back to the person who gave it to me. And they said, what do you think? I said, oh, I said, wow. I was like, wow. And then I had another, there was another guy in high school here would come, uh, he, well, I mean, the Canterbury Boys, the Canterbury Boys. Um, <laughs> the Canterbury Boys. Um, Clip them all because I bought Master of Puppets on vinyl. And I was about to, I think I've still got it. I said, Am I going to even mention this? I went through a Christian phase in 1993. Not becoming born again Christian at that point, but I went through a huge, I went through a Christian fa phase deciding that all heavy metal was evil. Jason Newstead was my favourite. I haven't heard Metallica in a decade. I moved, moved on from Metallica a very, very, very long time ago. I actually don't listen to Metallica anymore. It was because Jason left, that was it for me, and I just can't, you know. And Load and Reload, I enjoyed them. Cliff Moore, I went to Utopia Records in Sydney. Anyone from Utopia Records, if you're listening now, you should have sold me the fucking thing, right? Fucking idiots. Or the fucking idiot that was moving to Martin Place. Whoever the fucking idiot was that, that was working at Martin Place that morning at Utopia Records, fuck off. And so I went there about 1986, went down to Utopia Records in Martin Place to get Cliff, Cliff Moore. Went to buy it. And the guy at the counter, he said, Oh, would you do? Uh, he said, It came with this long winded fucking bullshit excuse, I can't sell it to you. And I'm like, What? Because he didn't think I was cool enough. He didn't think I was cool enough. They're just fucking idiot. Anyway, I left and um, gave me this really fucking technical, long winded bullshit thing. I'm like, What the fuck are you talking about? I went back to I went back to because I went back to school the next day and went up to the guy who was giving me the stuff and I said I'm into Utopia so he said oh Cliff Blade he wouldn't give it to me he's like what so he lent it to me he gave me let me flip them all well, he taped double taped it for me he gave it to me VHS he double taped on VHS so that was the Cliff them all and. Um, Uh, quick fast forward to 2006, okay, 2005, HMV Broadway, walked in there, and uh, HMV Broadway 2005, t-shirt, t-shirt rack, last one, this was the last one, and, and, and I picked it up, it's a, it was 35 bucks, and I was like, I went in purposely looking for this, just thinking that Broadway might have one, and I took it off the rack, 
35 bucks size L. They closed up soon after that. It was like, uh, and, and, and um, proud purchase, been, been through the ringer, this is the back, and uh, the more for a while actually. So, uh, Poison also, okay, so back in the day, Poison, Van Halen, I loved, as soon as I heard Van Halen, I loved Van Halen, as soon as I heard them, as soon as I saw Rock. And incidentally, actually, I think perhaps maybe the, maybe the first time I did for for, for Eat em and Smile, that was terrific. Deep Purple as well. Do you remember, remember Creatures of the Spotlight in the 90s? And sometimes at the very end of the night for Creatures of the Spotlight, they play the Keith Jarrett, Keith Jarrett the Colon concert. I really used to enjoy that a great deal. Keith, Keith Jarrett the Colon concert. That was good. Uh, eventually, I, 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 I bought that on CD. Bought that on CD. Eurythmics. Eurythmics. Eurythmics are terrific. Love the Eurythmics. In 2011, on repeat for about a day. It's missing the miracle of love on repeat for a day. On repeat, just all day on repeat while I drank vodka. Top that. And, uh, what was now? Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Yes. And wonderful Aerosmith. Wonderful. Actually, I call them Aerosmith the American version of the Rolling Stones. And, uh, Miles Davis. So that was it. So so, and they're moving in much. Uh, this is all leading up to um, um oh, Motley Crue. Proud to say that I uh, I I I, I uh, attended my my last year of high school. I attended Motley Crue, Doctor Philwood to a Sydney Entertainment Centre. It's my first the first international band that I ever went to see live, and um, the first band I ever saw in a large large arena space and uh, 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 yes uh, what was I saying Motley Crue, Dr. Philwood Sydney Entertainment Centre 1990, I was up on the side it was fantastic, it was wild never forget it, there was no mobile phones no mobile phones around, there was no mobile phones everyone just enjoyed the moment with the band in front of them. And uh, so da, 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 and uh, Chili Peppers. Real Chili Peppers I went to the city and I bought um Blood Sugar Sex Magic. A couple of days after I came out with the city and bought it on cassette. Uh what else? Yeah, okay, so uh, when Injust uh, Injustice came out, I tried to get into it, but I couldn't really get into Injustice when it came out. For some reason, it wasn't really following me that well. And I, I, I liked South of Heaven, and I thought that Stay Before It was very interesting. Stay Before It was very interesting, and uh, I wasn't really getting into I was trying really hard to get into Injustice, but I uh, wasn't really taken to it that well. I wasn't really taken to Injustice that well. Uh, and at the same, oh, and I had this, oh, that's what, that's what happened to me in mid high school. Like, I can remember about you, ten, like this, this thing happened to me in high school where I was listening to so much heavy metal and a bit of death metal that I sort of burnt myself out on music, I burnt myself out. And so, because because uh, uh, many of the metal heads in high school were strictly heavy metal. They can't listen to anything but heavy metal, but I was not, it was never like that. And so I was listening to the top 40 video hits of a Saturday and Sunday morning, I was watching Rage. Uh, for at least half the night on a Saturday or Sunday, I was watching Rage for a few hours, right? And, I, and, 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 they, and they had, uh, well, everything that was on the charts at the time. And, and, and I would enjoy it, I enjoy the majority of it. But what I was trying to say is that I was listening to all the pop music, Michael Jackson, Prince, Love, Prince, Prince, and uh, also David Bowie got my attention as well. And, uh, Old Beatles. Um, I didn't grow up listening to that much Rolling Stones in my teenage years, but I came to listen to the Rolling Stones uh, about the age of 17 onwards, 16 onwards, 17 onwards. And the 
The first time that I actually went back to the back catalog, like two times, was it two times four? The first time I went back to the earlier records, I had an instant like for them. I enjoyed them immediately. Thought they were wonderful. Because I've seen the clips on Rage, and I've seen all the Beatles clips on Rage. And uh, they were terrific. Getting to, um, just getting, uh, Tori Amos. Tori Amos, but that was 2001 Tori Amos. Uh, Jackie Strength, Tori Amos. I got banned from listening to that. I was going over to a friend's place about 1999 and I got there one day. He said, What do you want to listen to? I said, Oh, Tori Amos. He said, No, no more Tori because I listened to it all the time. I wouldn't request anything else. Tori Amos. He said, This is now a Tori Amos free zone. I was like, What are you doing? Yeah. I've requested all the time, Pat. So we're going to lay off Tori Amos for a bit. <laughs> now, um, Yeah, I got uh, attempted uh, grunge, <laughs> Nirvana, <laughs> my two least favorite bands of all time, Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. <laughs> um, my two least favorite bands of all time. This is what happened: grunge, did, did this in about 1992, right? And heavy metal did this. Oh yes, Skid Row. Skid Row opened for Guns N' Roses Eastern Creek in '93. I've always liked Axel's attitude. Always like, you know, I always appreciated Axel's attitude. Yes, Axel was arrogant, but that's what I liked about him. Because if you're a rock star, you've got to have that edge. You've got to have attitude on stage. And Miles Kennedy does not have that attitude. He doesn't have that attitude. It was around 1989, so I heard all these bands, all these new. Been listening to all this music from Madonna, Prince, Michael Jackson, Motorhead, um, uh, Slayer, Ozzy, Sabbath, um, Beatles, bit, bit the Stones, probably a bit more Beatles than the Stones at that point, but no, Aero, Aerosmith, Alice Cooper, Alice Cooper. There was, there was two, two bands. I, during my high school year, there was two cassettes I listened to. It was Alice Cooper's Trash and Motley Crue, Dr. Phil, but they got me through my HSC. And then um, what happened was that uh, 1990 rolled around. 1990 rolled around, 91, and I decided to become obsessed by Guns N' Roses. And I decided to listen to them constantly. I went out and I bought Appetite. In fact, I didn't bought Appetite. I think I bought Gene R. Lies and I bought Led Zeppelin 1. And I bought Appetite. And I listened to Appetite constantly. I just listened to it constantly on repeat, just constantly. And live at the Ritz. Live at the Ritz had been aired on MTV. Richard Wilkins. Richard Wilkins. Marvellous. Met Richard Wilkins. I met him in 2008. Very nice person. He was very nice. I spoke to him for about two minutes. He was very nice to me. Really, really. He's a top bloke. Very nice to me. Gene Art Live at the Ritz, 88. So I recorded it off MTV as I did it on VHS. I've still got it too. And I watched it. I watched it every day for months on end, for months on end. Actually, I watched Live at the Ritz for months on end before I watched MTV Live at the Ritz, Guns N' Roses, uh, for about six months on end, uh, uh, before I bought Appetite. So maybe about three or four months I was watching it constantly every day, and then I bought Appetite. Uh, I remember that time Pump came out, Aerosmith's Pump, and Aerosmith's Pump came out. Uh, Jane's got a gun. That was big. Cause I'd heard Aerosmith before that, but I hadn't really got into them yet. I watched this Van, I watched this Van Halen documentary on YouTube yesterday. It was very interesting. Uh, and then throughout the years, any time, any time they interview Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue, my ears like, it's like, it's, I loved. The interviews. Hit Parade magazine, remember Hit Parade magazine? In circus. Oh, fuck you, Mick Wallet Kerrang, ripping up the kids. Um, uh, was it? I haven't heard the Illusion, oh, I haven't heard, heard the Illusion albums, I haven't heard them in about five or six years. I think I went back on a couple of years ago. But I haven't heard the Illusion albums in some time. 